welcome to the sixth episode of Thinking Out Loud podcast with Samantha Leah. My name is Samantha Leah, and I hope you are all doing well. There's a lot of energies bombarding the earth right now, and I hope you are taking time to yourself, much needed self love time, much needed relaxation. I've been doing that, and that's not typical for me. Like most of us, we're very go, go, go oriented. It's important to stop and take a deep breath and just exist and just be and really be kind to yourself right now really important to be kind to yourself right now so I'm going to read something I wrote a few days ago and I hope it's helpful you are in control of your vibration 100% of the time I know it may sound absolutely insane to think you can choose your vibrational state in the midst of chaos, pain, and challenge. But I will tell you right now, not only is it possible, but it is really important that we learn to cultivate this skill. We have grown up in a society that has caused us to be very needy and reliant on outside sources. Now, what if you grew up in a house without one or both of your parents? You may say, I had to learn how to fend for myself and therefore this does not apply to me. Yes, in cases such as these, you are most likely a lot more self-reliant than others. But let's take a look at the bigger picture. Let's start by talking about food. Most of us are not farmers. Most of us do not live in self-sufficient communities. Most of us are not participating in a barter trading system where, for instance, I grow a specific type of crop, my neighbor grows a different crop, and we trade. In a community setting, with multiple crops being planted and traded, we would rely upon our small local surroundings when it comes to food instead of large corporate owned supermarkets. Take into consideration how often we ask others for advice instead of learning to build trust and connection between little us, our human ego self, and big us, our divine self. Or how many of us have been influenced by society and family members about what career path we're going to take, what college we should go to, where we should live, what we can afford. We are far more controlled by outside influences than we may be aware of. Much of the control is rarely questioned or even recognized. What documents do you need to fly to a new country? What documents do you need to get a new driver's license in your state? What vaccines do you need to go to that country? What vaccines do you need to go to school? What tests do you need to take to get into that school? What medicine do you need to cure a specific disease? Why is there an extra charge on my phone bill? What would happen if I did not pay that extra charge? Would the company just shut my phone off? Do they care if I can't afford the extra fee? Where is each and every cent of my tax dollars going to? Why does it feel like 
no matter who is elected into office, nothing ever truly changes. Who owns the media companies? Who decides what commercials play in between the TV shows I watch? The questions are endless. These are, of course, open-ended questions. They are not questions here to trigger a specific response. They're here to get us to think. How many things are already decided for us before we do them? The answer is many. In actuality, the true answer is nearly everything. No matter what your soul's mission is, which is what you are specifically passionate about fighting for, change is possible. The more of us that desire a change, the better. But what creates long-term change? This is where the important skill mentioned earlier, choosing your vibration despite the conditions and circumstances of your life, comes back in. Our vibration is something we do have control over amidst a system full of choicelessness. But first, there are a couple of errors in our current way of initiating change. And the, tr the truth is, we are off the hook for these mistakes as they are a reflection of an old paradigm of thinking. In this current moment, we are ending one spiritual season or a paradigm and entering into the next, what has been frequently referred to as the age of Aquarius. The indoctrination that we have experienced in this lifetime is not our fault. Life on earth up until now can be comparable to a dark gray sky. Although you and I both know that the sun exists behind a gray sky and its reappearance is inevitable, meaning sunny days will come. Living on Earth is comparable to a dark gray sky in which knowledge of the sun does not exist. There is only darkness. Maybe here and there a cloud moves in a certain way where a streak of light is able to peek through. But we know that the light is not here to stay and the return of complete darkness is not a probability, but a definite. This metaphor comes to me when I think of the way we as humans have existed on this plane of existence for so, so, so long. But change is upon us. And no matter how we individually perceive it, we, the awakened collective, know this. We have read about it. We've heard about it. We feel it. We are interested in it. Change is ignited from within. And once you begin to understand that, the external world you experience, ooh, and once you begin to understand that the external world you experience through your five senses is a projection of your own mind, you also understand that your vibrational state of mind is the most important aspect of your life. My name is Samantha. I know through experience what egoic darkness feels like. So for what reason do I have to be an optimist? What reason do I have to go about chanting all day, raise your vibration? What inspires me to see the best in bad situations? Here is the most concise answer possible. I have learned that seeing the best in everything and everyone is what leads to true happiness, true power, and true freedom. I'm going to read that again because in my opinion, that's the most important part of what I wrote. So, Seeing the best in everything and everyone is what leads to true happiness, true power, and true freedom. I have also learned that there are two necessary factors that must be present in an individual for long-standing change to be ignited. 
They are number one, suffering enough to the point where you feel a sense of giving up, a sense of surrender, a sense of there must be a better way. If you find yourself saying or feeling, I will do anything to feel better, you have potentially reached this point. Suffering is here to push us to the edge where surrender to the divine is possible, despite the ego's fear of surrender. As a survival mechanism, the ego wishes to always be in charge, and so surrender is a threat to its existence. The amount of suffering necessary for each individual is specific to their own journey, and it is quite possible that someone will suffer to their grave without ever reaching the moment of complete surrender in this lifetime. On the flip side, it is also quite possible that someone may experience only a little bit of suffering and snap out of it at a young age. It is completely different for each person, and there is no right or wrong here. Number two, after surrender happens, one must trust in God, the universe, divinity, that change is possible and happiness is attainable. Even if the positive experience may be perceived as far away from the person's current reality. There must be a drive and a devotion to the healing journey for if this is not present, old patterns will creep back in and the person will not make significant changes. For that drive to stay consistent and as strong on day 100 as it is on day one, there must be a trust in the process or a faith in a higher power. Without these two prerequisites, the motivation for change is not fully there and therefore a long-standing change cannot occur. Sure, a romantic relationship may come in and give you temporary happiness, or perhaps a substance will fill in for some time. But, as most of us have already learned through life experience, the dark emotions eventually resurface. These dark emotions are like signposts on your journey telling you, Hey, pay attention to us. We are telling you something important. If you are driving from one state to the next and you do not pay attention to signposts that are there to help guide you, you may miss important information. Say for instance, there are multiple signs telling you, do not go this way. There is work being done on the drawbridge ahead. The first one is less obvious, quite subtle and barely detectable unless you are very, very focused. You definitely do not see it. So you continue driving along your path and again, there is a sign stating, you are going the wrong way. Please take the next exit and follow the detour to your desired route. This time, the colors on the sign are more pronounced, more in your face, and perhaps even written in a bright neon green. You miss the sign though, because you're still not paying attention. Finally, as you continue driving, there is yet another sign, except this time the words are larger, more pronounced, written in all caps, neon colors, and there are even blinking lights surrounding it. You will fall into water if you keep driving on this road! Exclamation point. Again, you are not paying attention. Maybe for a moment you see the sign and you are able to read a word, but then your attention is diverted by a lover's touch or someone passing you the bottle of vodka to drink from. You miss the sign. Finally, you reach the bridge that is being worked on and you see that you cannot go any further. You have reached the edge. In life, this could be manifested as a mental breakdown, a serious illness or injury, or something else large enough to finally catch your attention. You say to yourself, I never could have seen this coming. Yet the signs were there. They were there to guide you, 
but you were unable or unwilling to perceive them, and therefore you claim they were never there in the first place. Your emotions are constantly guiding you, trying to tell you how far off you are from your alignment. Treat them like you treat the temperature game. If your emotions feel terribly negative to you, you are getting colder, meaning you are further away from your alignment. If they feel only slightly off, like a feeling of boredom, irritation, or doubt, understand that you are getting warmer you are only slightly off course. When you experience those days, which when I wrote this, my guidance implanted the song, Days Like This by Van Morrison in my mind. So if you've never listened to it, you should check it out. So when you experience those days, when you walk outside and take a fresh breath of air, you look at the sky and you feel the sun's warmth and you feel grateful to be alive, this is the sweet spot. You have found your alignment in these moments. Maybe these moments are far and few in your life currently, but acknowledge that they do exist. Maybe you connect with an old friend and you're happy to hear their voice, or you go on a run and you feel strong and healthy. Begin to jot down the moments when you feel aligned and start to notice what it feels like. Alignment feels like love, freedom, excitement, peace, bliss, passion, enthusiasm, clarity, which I didn't even write down here, but that just came to me. And there are so many other words, so many other feelings that you can come up with. Once you know what alignment feels like, you can learn how to cultivate this feeling, even through tough times. You will no longer need the outside circumstances to persuade you into alignment. You will feel connected to your power whether the sun is shining or not, whether your old friend whom you love calls you or not, whether your morning run makes you feel strong or not. The necessity for conditions to lift you into alignment is no longer there. This is unconditional love, unconditional freedom, unconditional joy. You no longer need specific conditions to feel connected. There are many, many cases of prisoners attaining enlightenment, unity consciousness, from within their jail cells. How is this possible? How can an inmate find pure connection to source in such a limited space? How can someone experience true freedom when they are sentenced to a lifetime behind bars? This one example demonstrates the power of the human mind this one example shows us where alignment with the divine is truly found. So, I didn't write this, but it's an inside job. Alignment is found in the mind, not externally. So far in my own life, I have experienced time and time again that relying on outside sources to keep me happy is a recipe for disaster. This has helped me to recognize that alignment with the divine is a superpower and a skill that takes time, effort, and energy to strengthen. You cannot be born into and grow up in a society that does not encourage you to exercise your intuitive abilities, and in fact does the exact opposite, and expect to wake up on day one of your healing journey fully connected to your higher knowing, just because you want it to be so. Patience, diligence, and trust, trust, trust are necessary if change is to last. 
lifelong self-sabotaging habits created out of survival tactics during childhood will need to slowly but surely be replaced with healthy, beneficial habits. Some days you will wake up and feel sad, lonely, depressed, even though you had a few really good days or weeks leading up to it. It's in these moments where you must trust the process and remind yourself that you are breaking lifelong and family slash ancestral patterns. So I didn't write this, but you are doing more than you think by doing this work. You're breaking really long ancestral patterns that have been passed down for a very long time. You are, you're breaking those patterns. So like I said, it, it doesn't happen overnight, so it requires trust. You are in control of your vibration 100% of the time, whether you know it or not. You are creating your reality 100% of the time, whether you know it or not. You are the director of your own movie 100% of the time, whether you know it or not. If you have gotten this far, Perhaps it is your time to fully commit to acknowledging these statements as truth and to fully commit to whatever you need to do to live in divine alignment with your higher self. And so that is what I wrote a few days ago. And I am going to leave it right there I hope that you find your divine alignment slowly but surely. We are all works in progress. I'm a work in progress, but I acknowledge my progress in this process. So you need to acknowledge your progress and be kind to yourself and allow yourself to rest I love you very much and I'll see you next time.